Today we're going to see how standard mechanical calipers are used. The caliper is one of the most common all-round measuring tools. Because calipers often have several measuring surfaces, they can measure inside, outside, and depth dimensions with an accuracy down to a thousandth of an inch. Although calipers come in different sizes, there are two basic types which are most commonly used. One is the vernier caliper, which has a main scale and a vernier scale. The caliper in more common use is the dial type. Measurement readings are taken from a main scale on the beam and from a dial face. Standard calipers consist of a beam or bar with graduated scales on which these jaws move. The inside measurement jaws are here with their flat measuring surfaces facing out. They are used for making inside measurements. The outside measurement jaws with the flat measuring surfaces facing in are here. Note that each set of jaws has one fixed jaw and one adjustable or movable jaw. The movable jaws are connected to the slider either a thumb clamp or a wheel is commonly used to move the slider and adjust the jaws to the proper measurement position. To measure an OD or a thickness, you would open the outside jaws of the caliper to a distance slightly wider than the dimension to be measured. To measure an ID, you open the inside jaws slightly less than the diameter. In either case, the caliper's jaws are then moved against the dimension, arcing from left to right. This aligns or squares the jaws with the surface. Finally, the caliper's jaws are adjusted tightly enough so that they create a slight drag against the surface to be measured. When the jaws move, the depth blade also moves. When the edge of the beam is held this way, at an edge or a hole, Steps, or depth, can be measured by using the depth blade. Like other measuring tools, calipers are available in decimal inch and metric scales. Let's first examine the vernier caliper to see how its scales are used to take measurements. All calipers have at least one main scale on the beam, often called the beam scale or the bar scale. This caliper has two main scales because it is designed for taking measurements in decimal inches and in millimeters. And there are two vernier scales on the slider, one for decimal readings and the other for metric readings. We will concentrate on the decimal vernier. The decimal vernier allows precision readings to one thousandth of an inch. It operates in similar fashion to the vernier on the outside vernier micrometer we looked at in lesson two. However, this vernier is laid out flat, parallel to the caliper beam. Each division of this decimal inch main scale represents 25 thousandths of an inch. Each fourth line marked by a number indicates 100 thousandths. Here, the longer lines and larger numbers indicate inches. The line indicated as one represents one hundred thousandths. The line indicated as two represents two hundred thousandths until we get to one inch, two inches, three inches, and so on. This point on the main scale is three hundred thousandths. And here, the reference line is two short graduations beyond five hundred thousandths, which indicates five hundred and fifty thousandths. Remember, each smaller line equals twenty-five thousandths, so two lines beyond the number means an additional fifty thousandths. This point on the scale indicates two inches and one hundred seventy-five thousandths. The key to reading measurements taken with the vernier caliper lies in understanding that the basic reference line is the zero mark of the vernier scale. You obtain the reading by noting where on the main scale the zero mark of the vernier scale indicates. Here, 
The zero mark on the vernier scale indicates a reading of nine hundred thousandths of an inch. Remember, the reading is taken where the zero mark on the vernier lines up with a graduation on the beam's main scale. The steps in taking a measurement are similar to those used with the outside vernier micrometer. First, determine the number of inches the vernier zero mark has passed. In this case, it has passed the two inch mark. Next, note the hundred thousandths graduations that the vernier zero has passed. Here we can see it has passed the one hundred thousandths mark. Then determine the number of small divisions past the hundred thousandths mark the vernier zero indicates. Here the vernier zero is lined up exactly with the first line past the one hundred thousandths mark, indicating twenty-five thousandths. Because the vernier zero lines up exactly on a scale line, we can take a reading by adding only the three main scale graduations. In this case, it is two inches plus one hundred thousandths plus twenty-five thousandths, which total two inches and one hundred twenty-five thousandths. Here is a measurement on the vernier caliper. Can you tell what reading is indicated? Be sure to notice that the zero mark of the vernier scale has passed the three inch mark. It is also passed the two hundred thousandths graduation. Finally, the zero reference line corresponds to the third graduation past the two hundred thousandths division, indicating seventy-five thousandths. And so three inches plus two hundred thousandths plus seventy-five thousandths equals three inches and two hundred seventy-five thousandths. For measurements accurate to a thousandth of an inch, the vernier scale is used. Again, the vernier on the caliper is similar to the one found on micrometers. But remember, the vernier on the micrometer is capable of indicating measurements to tenths of a thousandth, while the vernier caliper indicates measurements to only one thousandth of an inch. The vernier on the caliper is an enlargement of the twenty-five thousandths markings between minor divisions on the main scale. When the zero reference on the vernier scale does not line up exactly with a mark on the main scale, then a reading of the vernier is required. To read the vernier scale on the caliper, locate the first graduation of the vernier after the zero, which coincides precisely with one of the divisions on the main scale. Then you read the number from the graduations on the vernier. For example, here, the first graduation on the vernier, which lines up exactly with the division on the main scale, is five. This is a reading of five thousandths. Naturally, it takes a little practice to see where the graduations line up precisely, because the lines are small. Now let's review how to take a measurement down to one thousandth of an inch. First, you determine the number of inches the vernier zero has passed. In this case, it has passed one inch. Next, determine which hundred thousandths the reference zero has passed. Here it has passed the one hundred thousandths mark. It has also passed the first twenty-five thousandths graduation. But because the vernier reference zero has not exactly lined up on a twenty-five thousandths line, we must read the vernier scale. The first graduation on the vernier scale, which coincides with a line on the main scale, is here, thirteen thousandths. Finally, we add up the results. One inch plus one hundred thousandths plus twenty-five thousandths plus thirteen thousandths. This gives a total measurement of one inch and one hundred and thirty-eight thousandths. The dial caliper operates in a similar manner to the vernier caliper, but its design allows for easier and quicker readings. Measurements are obtained by taking the combined readings of the main scale and the dial. To hold the measurements, this caliper has a lock nut on the top of the slider. The markings on the main scale are much simpler than on the vernier caliper's main scale. Each large number indicates inches, 
while the smaller numbers on the minor divisions indicate hundred thousandths. For example, this point on the main scale represents five inches and three hundred thousandths. The dial is calibrated so that each complete revolution of the pointer represents one hundred thousandths of an inch. Every ten thousandths is numbered, ten thousandths, twenty thousandths, thirty thousandths, and so on. Each division between ten thousandths marks represents one thousandth, with the slightly longer line indicating five thousandths. If the pointer indicates a reading between graduations, it is usually rounded off to the nearest thousandth. Here the pointer indicates three divisions past the twenty thousandths mark, or twenty-three thousandths. Here, the pointer indicates a reading at the second division after the ninety thousandths mark, which reads as ninety-two thousandths. In order to take a total reading with the dial caliper, the indication on the main scale is red, then the reading on the dial display is red and added to it. First, the caliper jaws are positioned against the object being measured, and either the thumb clamp is released or a lock nut is tightened to hold the measurement. Next, we determine the point on the main scale that the edge of the slider indicates. Note that the dial caliper is different from the vernier caliper, which utilizes the zero point on the vernier scale as its reference. On the dial caliper, the beveled edge of the slider is the reference line. We note the number of inches the edge of the slider has passed. In this case, it has passed the two inch mark. Then we note how many hundred thousandths beyond the two inch mark the edge of the slider has passed. Here, the edge is slightly past the three hundred thousandths mark. Next, we determine the number of thousandths on the dial indicator. The dial indicator is pointing at six divisions past the thirty thousandths mark, or thirty-six thousandths. Finally, we add up all the values we have obtained. Two inches plus three hundred thousandths from the main scale plus thirty-six thousandths from the dial indicator equals two inches and three hundred and thirty-six thousandths. Here is another measurement on the dial caliper. What is the total reading indicated? As you can see, the edge of the slider is past the one inch mark and the three hundred thousandths division. The pointer on the dial indicates one division past the seventy thousandths mark. One inch plus three hundred thousandths plus seventy one thousandths equals one inch and three hundred and seventy one thousandths. Before using a caliper, make sure that the measuring surfaces of the jaws are free of dust and dirt. Use a soft cloth to clean them if necessary. Next, check to see that the device is calibrated before you use it. With a dial caliper, like the one in the precision measurements kit, close the jaws fully. Then, check the indicator on the dial. It should be exactly at the zero mark. If it is, then the caliper is calibrated and will take measurements accurately. If the indicator is not on the zero mark, then the device is not calibrated. Call on your instructor for assistance. Read the material and do the practice exercises in your study guide. Then take a little time to make sure you understand everything we've covered in the first three lessons. In lesson four, we're going to apply what we've learned with some intensive hands-on practice using the devices from the Precision Measurements Kit.